You know, in the spring, one of my favorite ways to catch them is on a frog. So today, I've brought in one of the best frog fishermen I know, Griff, to help me break down our five favorite frogs that we think you guys should definitely be throwing this season. It's gonna be a fun deep dive, and we're gonna see if Griff can say more than what he usually says on videos. Think you can handle that? Yes. All right, let's do it. Welcome to the Hook of Tackle. The Hook of Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hook Up also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hook of Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, what's up my friends? I am Ben Kohler, aka The Tackle Otaku on Instagram. Being joined today by my buddy Griff at G Sticks Bespoke on Instagram. We are being filmed by our friend Jeffrey the King. We are the Hookup Tackle USA. Today we are just gonna break down our five favorite frogs that we love to throw that we really think you guys should add to your arsenal. So, frog fishing. I know it's one of your favorite things. You do it almost every day of your life, don't you? Uh, I try to throw a frog almost every time I go fishing, yeah. Yeah, which is almost every day of your life. Yes. Yeah, so this is, this is gonna be exciting because a lot of people love frogs, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of people still aren't really into frog fishing and there's a lot of options on the market and a lot of people tend to get stuck down the same path and we see it all the time where, oh, I'm gonna go buy a frog, I'm gonna go buy, buy a spro. Yeah. Right? Because that's kind of like your, if the first thing you think about in frog fishing is a, a Spro Bronze Eye Frog. They really put it on the map. Yeah, definitely. Right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Spro makes a great frog. And for a lot of people, it works amazingly well. But there are just hundreds of options when it comes to buying a frog, to using a frog. So we've definitely broken it down to our favorites. So this would be kind of fun to talk through them and expose them. Yes. Cool. So when it comes to frogs, I have some things that I look for on a frog to make me decide like, okay, this is a good frog or a bad frog, or this is a frog I prefer or not prefer. Do you have certain things that you break down when you're selecting frogs? How does, how does it work for you when you're deciding, well, this frog is better than that frog? When I get a frog, I don't have like a, a look that I'm looking for. Everything's a trial and error at first for me. So when I throw a frog, the first thing I like to look at is the ability to walk the frog. Just give you a frog, so you have a prop. Yeah. Props are good. So the ability to walk the frog is very important to me. And then the ability to actually hook the fish. So you look like a lot of frogs are pretty stiff, but when you're hooking the frog, you want the body to be able to collapse. So that's very important to me also. And then I'm gonna go with like three different sizes, a small, a medium, and a large frog. And, and when you're going with the different sizes, are you trying to match uh, certain profiles or when are you selecting small, medium, or large? Um, I think it's gonna be more weather dependent for me. So when I have like slick, calm water, the smaller frog is gonna be my best option. And then when we get a little bit of chop, I'm gonna go with a medium one with more of a cupped mouth. And then when you got a lot of chop on the water and I still want to throw the frog, I'm going to go with a bigger profile. Got it. So for me, I do very similar things to you. The first thing for me that's important is castability, right? Yeah. Like the frog has to be able to cast. There's a lot of frogs on the market that are small and petite, but don't cast very good. Mm -hmm. Or they're big and they're like too big and you can't cast them very good, yeah. right? So I like the castability uh, first and foremost. Second is you gotta be able to move it, right? So the majority of time for me, I'm walking a frog. Now, frogs, you can just kinda, you know, twitch the rod and it will just kinda cup and, you know, kinda porpoise up and down, yeah. right? And some people catch them really good just 
porpoising them, mm-hmm. right? I've never experienced where that works. I've always experienced where the frog needs to be moving side to side, just like a walking bait. Yeah. Same? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you get more bites on the paws after a walk than you do just like dragging it through the water. Yeah. Some frogs are designed to pop, right? They make popping frogs. A lot of guys catch them really good on that. Not really something I throw that much. I've always just experienced where they eat it best kind of on a walk and then a pause, like we just talked about, right? Yeah. Okay, so the ability for it to move is important. The ability to get bit is super important. Like they, they gotta eat the fucking thing. Yeah, definitely. Right? So Guido Hipton told me one time, they gotta bite it first, right? Yeah. So like that was always what he would, you know, put through my head, like you gotta get them to eat first, then you can worry about all the other shit, right? So they gotta eat it, but once they eat it, I want I want them in. Yeah. Right? So the ability to land them is super critical with frogs. So there's a lot of frogs on the market that get bit, but they suck at hookup ratio. Right? So getting back to what you said, their bodies are too hard, the hooks aren't in the right place, right? Yeah. So all of these things are going into the decision making really to find the best frog. Okay? So Let's talk about hookup ratio really quick, and then we'll dive into the actual frogs. Okay. Okay. So, you know, you were demonstrating, you know, a little bit about what you look for in like the collapsibility of a frog and the softness of a frog, right? Yeah. And I see a lot of people that come in here all the time, and and they when they look at a frog, the first thing they do is they they kind of squeeze it down like this, right? Mm -hmm. And they're they're not looking at the softness of the frog. They're trying to gauge the gap of this hook, Mm -hmm. right? And sometimes if there's not a lot of gap, they go, oh, there's not a lot of gap there. It's never going to hook them. But, you know, bass, when they're eating these things, they're not, they're not biting them, Mm -hmm. right? So a bass doesn't come up and and bite a bait, right? It's not like, oh, look at that's cute and bite it to where this, this goes. When, when they're eating a frog, they're, they're sucking it in and that whole thing Mm -hmm. is in their mouth, right? So the more important thing to check with a frog instead of this like top to bottom thing here is really this side right because this is the hook that you're going to get it's 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 this side profile because 19 out of 20 times when you end up hooking a fish the the hook is going to twist out of the frog like that and that's how you hook them right because they're getting this bait they're sucking it in it's getting all the way down in the crusher Mm -hmm. right and then you're swinging and you're hitting them, it needs to bend through the frog, right, to hook them. Yeah. Not straight up and down. So, do you have anything to add to that? Or did I nail that? No, that's pretty good. Yeah, I nailed it. Okay. So, another thing is you'll see guys, when they struggle on hookup ratio, you see a lot of times that they bend their hooks up, right? Have you ever experimented with that? No, I've never done it. Okay. Never in my life. So, you know, as we talk through a lot of this stuff, if some of the stuff is working for you guys that we say is wrong, don't listen to us. I mean, if it's working for you, keep doing it, right? We're just here to try to make everybody's experience the best it can be, right? And to try to save you some headache and to not lose that fish when you finally get a giant blow up. The reason why we never recommend bending the hooks up is because in frog fishing, remember, they're going to get this thing down in the crusher right? So you need, it's going to be a very hard hook set because you need to move that hook through that plastic and into the fish. You want the hook point to basically be in the same line, the same plane as the line so that when the line's pulling this way, it's pulling the hook the same direction, right? If you bend the hook upright, then what's happening is the line's pulling and the hook is just scratching them, right? So you're getting more hook tip, but it's just scratching because it's just dragging it through there. So if you're going to adjust the hooks, right? And sometimes I do, depending on how they're eating it or what kind of cover or whatever, the best thing to do is to bend them outwards, not up, right? So most frogs come pretty weedless, right? So like that's a pretty tight, like you can't really feel any hook on that frog, Yeah. right? So it's designed like that. You can throw it in the shit. You can walk it through the shit, and it's not going to be super snaggy. But if you ever feel like you're just not getting enough bite, 
your best bet is to just turn the hook and to bend it out a little bit, right? So then after you've bent it out, it gets just a little wider to the side because it's the side penetration that's really important. And then when you've put it back in there, you get a little more you know, hook point on there and when you pull it out, you've got a little bit more barb. But 19 out of 20 times that I go, I probably don't mess, I just take it out of the package and throw it. You? Yeah, I don't mess with my hooks. Um, I think where you're throwing the frog is gonna make the biggest difference in how your hooks sit on the frog. Because if you're throwing in heavy cover, you don't want your hook point exposed. You just wanna rely on your hook set to get that mm. penetration. So let's talk about that for a minute then. Yeah. What are you doing hook set wise to make sure that you've moved the hook past the body of the frog and into the fish? Uh, so once I get a blow up, I'm not immediately swinging. I'm waiting for a little bit of pull on the rod. When I can feel the pull on the rod, that means that fish has turned and that bait is almost sideways already. And then I'm swinging as hard as I can. And I'm, I'm driving that hook in there. Yeah. 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 And that's really important because when you analyze the science of the eat on mm -hmm. a frog, right? Yeah. We generally are walking the bait. So we have a direct basic contact to the frog, right? So I've thrown out here past Jeff's head. My frog's out there. I'm walking in this direct line. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everything is immediate here, right? There's yeah. no slack. There's no side. There's no, there's no forgiving. Everything is pretty much immediate to my frog. When the fish come up and they, and again, they're sucking this in, right? Mm -hmm. So as it's coming in, they're getting frog, but they're also getting water and air and like slime and muck or whatever yeah. it is that you're in, right? So they need to not only get this in, but they need to close their mouth and exhale and turn, like you mentioned, yeah. so that this frog has a chance to hit them, yeah. right? So a lot of times you see people and they're so immediate and as soon as they see the swirl, they jerk and the frog goes flying and they haven't even shut their mouth yet, right? They've sucked down and then you you've yanked it right out of their mouth before they've even had a chance yeah. to, to exhale. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys are struggling on your hook sets, you know, Griff's, Griff's advice is pretty much spot on to how I do it as well. Yeah. You know, I usually, you know, boom, they get it. I kind of just slightly bow to them and then swing. It just gives me a split second of not being too fast. Yeah. Right. But you got to you got to be paying attention because sometimes you go hours out of bite and you get a bite and you forgot all that stuff and you're so excited yeah. that you yeah you freak out you buffoon them yeah because yeah. it's so awesome and then you're just bored and you're just like oh wait oh and then yeah you're like oh my god I lost it and then you suck again yeah so okay. let's let's break down some frogs okay. okay we'll do a whole instructional video on exactly how we're walking these things the gear we use we'll go out to the river or something and go play around and and drop that but let's talk about baits okay. okay? So you have in your hand, this is my favorite frog. Is this, where would you put this on your list of, of frogs? This is number two on my list. Okay, so, so number one on mine and number two on yours. Yes. Okay, so if I had one, this is it. And if you had two, this yeah. is it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. this is the Jackal Gavacho frog. Now, let me just spec it out for you. It's 2.7 inches, 5 eighths of an ounce. Right? So a pretty normal size frog. This would be for me like a medium size frog. This is pretty yeah. normal. Would you consider this in your medium category? Yeah, this would be medium for me. Okay, talk about talk about the Gavacho and why why you like the Gavacho. I like the Gavacho because like I was saying earlier, when you get a little bit of chop on the water, you want kind of like a cupped mouth on there. But the Gavacho is amazing because you can walk it in place. You don't need to bring it in. It's probably the best walking frog on the planet. I agree with that. So you can sit there and just twitch it and it will go side to side instead of forward and side. Yep. It'll just... It's got a very similar kind of build like a pencil bobber, mm -hmm. right? Where it starts thin and then it gets, you know, how Jeff likes it, kind of that bulbous back end. Yeah. Right? So that bigger butt on the back end allows it to kind of slide. Yeah. Right. 
So a lot of the thinner or just more like traditional shaped frogs that are more like a teardrop, they just kind of slice through, mm -hmm. whereas this guy literally just kind of turns on place, Yeah. right? So a lot of guys think this is a popping frog and you probably could pop it, right? Um, but just because it's got that cup lip doesn't mean it has to be popped. It's yeah. It's by far, in my opinion, the easiest walking frog I've ever thrown. Yeah, absolutely. It walks, and then that cup mouth, when you twitch it, it throws so much water. So it's, it's creating a lot of commotion on the surface to give the fish a reason to look up. Yeah, yeah. So if I had one, this is the guy I'm getting. I keep colors pretty simple. For me, it's like white, black, bluegill. That's kind of the world I live in, unless a particular lake, something catches fire. Sometimes in the spring, a red is really good. You know, if I'm fishing, you know, maybe like a delta or a tidal water, I know sometimes, you know, they'll eat birds or different things. So sometimes I'll mix in colors. What do you do for colors? Uh, I just look at the bottom and I'll go white, black, and then maybe a green or chartreuse. Okay. That's it. Yeah, straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely give this guy a look, Jackal Gavacho Frog. You know, they're 10 bucks, so they're not super expensive. But it's, if, you, if I'm just gonna have one, this is it. Yeah. Also, if you look at the hooks on there, they're already facing outwards a little bit. So when the, when the frog is not compressed, it's sitting tight against the body. But when it compresses, it has a slight outward uh, point to it. So it makes it a lot easier to hook them. Yeah, they're coming up here, you're exhaling and they're squeezing it, right? This side, this is really where your hook is going in. You can kind of see what Griff is talking about there, where it kind of has that different unique shape there to really penetrate into the skin. So really great frog. Sick frog. That's one on my list. Well, what's one on your list then? Number one is the Kyera frog. Come All right, well, screw it. Let's jump to the Kyera frog. So another jackal frog. Yes. This is going to be a jackal promotional video. Yeah, right. Well, jackal makes amazing frogs. So if you guys aren't familiar with the jackal, care frog, care frog, whatever you want to call it, here you go. This guy is 2.2 inches, half an ounce. So it's about a half inch smaller than the gavacho. So here, I'll do a side by side so you guys can see it. So here's the gavacho, and then here's the cara. Okay, so you can see it's substantially smaller profile, but what's amazing about the Kara is that it still weighs half an ounce. So you can still cast this almost just as well as any full-size frog that you have in your box. So even though it's a super small profile, it throws so well. So talk to me about the Kara. This is your favorite frog. So what do you love about this thing? Favorite frog. So it's small. It's got a really small profile on it. It does cast very well. Um, and it's very subtle in the water, easy to walk, but it doesn't make a ton of commotion. And I think the combo of that just creates like a small bait fish style uh, look to it. Um, it's easy to hook fish. You can catch fish of all sizes on this thing and it's, it doesn't require that giant hook set. Mm -hmm. When you're setting the hook, you're not fighting the body of the frog. It's just and it just goes in, it penetrates really good. They use really good hooks on there. Yep, and here's here's how I always gauge my, my hooks is the upside down. So you can see that uh, there's, you know, they're great hooks, there's a lot of gap. So, you know, they hook them really, really well. They also make some dope colors in this thing. Yeah. So this is the one exception to my like white, black, bluegill is I throw the shad color a lot. Okay. Because I think of it the same way is that it's more of like a bait fish versus like a actual frog or mm -hmm. a bluegill or something moving across the surface. Yeah. Yeah, the colors are pretty sick. I still stick with like the original stuff. Like when, sometimes when you get other colors in, I'll get them because they just look cool. Like the JDM colors yeah. and stuff. Yeah, because they, it's fun to catch them on the cool stuff. Yeah, they just yeah. look sick when you're throwing them, but normally they'll still have either a black or a white or a green bottom. Right. And that's what to me is the most important. That's the important. I mean, that's really what the fish is saying is the bottom yeah. color. Yeah. And then those colors, you know, like I'm always saying, you gotta have fun, so just throw something crazy when you know you throw one that's like a black bottom with a chartreuse drip on it. Right. Something it just, like that. It looks sick. Yeah. Yeah. So this this would be probably number two or three on my list. Okay. It would be number one, except that I just I have so much confidence in the Gavacho. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's way, way up there 
Uh, like I, I couldn't imagine going frog fishing and not having a Kara. Yeah. In my box. Yeah, it's always where I start. I always start with the Kyra. So this is how it became my favorite. I would start with the Kyra. Yeah. And then I would never have to switch. So you just stay, stay there. Yeah. Yeah. And you're catching like 30, 40 fish a day on one frog, and it's just like. Well, and you know what? That's something else that we haven't really talked about is durability of frogs because there's a lot of frogs on the market that work great until you catch a bass yeah and then they tear and they sink and they have you know all kinds of durability issues neither of these frogs that we just talked about have durability issues no i mean you can you guys can wear these things out you'll get a lot of life out of them and again you're sub ten dollars for a frog mm -hmm. it's a great it's a great deal absolutely yeah. yeah so if you're looking for a smaller profile the Jack O'Kara frog, sick. Yeah. Yep. It's dope. All right. Let's uh, <clears throat> let's go the opposite way. Let's go bigger. Bigger. Then, because uh, I think both of, do you agree on this one for your bigger frog? Yeah. Okay. Sick. Yeah. All right. The Mega Bass Big Gabbit. Okay. So this is my bigger profile go-to frog. This is 77 millimeters, three quarters of an ounce. So we're getting up there in weight. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's a little bit heavier than that Gavacho. It's definitely a little bit bigger, but not by as much as people would think. No, so it's it's slightly bigger, but it makes a huge difference. So here's our original. Here's the Gavacho frog, and here's here's the big Gavin. So you can see it's not that much bigger. It's definitely a little bit wider. And it's slightly longer, right? But it has a totally different shape. So it has what they call a catamaran mouth, right? So this kind of face gives the frog the ability to have that great walk ability. Of course, you can spit it. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. Talk about your experience with, with the Big Gabbit. So the Big Gabbit I use when I got some chop on the water or when I need to make a ton of noise and that's the frog it's big the fish are are going to be like more active when i'm throwing it so i can pop it and it's just gonna it's gonna push water everywhere and then they can't miss it it's a giant it's a giant frog well to me it's a giant frog yeah it's a giant frog and it gets bit like when you got like a lot of bait fish moving like gills or tilapia on the bank yep you throw a gabbit in there and just Give it like a couple twitches and it's gonna get. And they pop it. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. get smashed. So I found that I like the big gabbit when I'm fishing really clear water mm -hmm. and there's like some grass, some tule, like a place like Havasu, for instance, or the okay. Colorado River, right? Where mm -hmm. it's just crystal clear and I gotta make as long a cast as I can before I get too shallow and spook anything. Mm. I can I can reach where I need to reach with this frog. Okay. Whereas a lot of times some of those smaller frogs, they just kind of catch in the wind and I don't get that accuracy with them. Okay, yeah, that the makes sense. The one thing that's really important to note with this frog, you heard us talk earlier about how, you know, the hooks twisting on the frog is really important for hookup ratio. Well, Mega Bass spent, God, I got, I'm gonna say five years in R&D on this frog. In fact, I fished the original Big Gabbit like five or six years ago that first came out and loved it, huh. but they kept tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it to perfect it to exactly what they wanted. This hook is actually siliconed in place, so it's not going to twist on the body. So what they did was to make up for that, they totally redesigned the hook. They wanted guys to be able to put it back in the toolies, skip it back in the cover, and have you know that still weedless ability, mm -hmm. but they redesigned this hook to be more like a spear. Yeah. So the hook point to the hook barb is like the longest point of any hook that I've ever seen. I mean, you've got this huge long spear here that basically just impales the fish, right? So if you compare that to, I don't know what I got here. Here's a gavacho. Right, you see how much longer this flat piece is than this flat piece, right? This hook is designed to, you know, go sideways and kind of twist into the fish, right? This hook is designed to stay on top and just kind of spear and impale them. So totally different 
hook design, but super effective. Yeah. I mean, it gets them. Yeah, so almost nine times out of 10 when I'm catching a fish on this, I got hook penetration through the fish instead of just in the, in the mouth and the bone. Right. It, like I'm seeing hook point outside of the Outside fish. of the fish. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just keeping them pinned. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dope. Yeah. And it's, it's easy. Like it's not a giant hook. It's just a normal hook. It's just longer, so it's it's easy. Right. Yeah. Super super simple. So, to some regards, I guess if you're just starting, this could be a really good frog to start on mm -hmm. because it's going to cast super super well because it's one of the heavier frogs without going to something like a king daddy or something that's just ginormous, yeah. right? So it's going to throw well and it's probably less technical from a hook setting standpoint because it's really designed to just as soon as you get a little bit of tension it just kind of yeah. spears them yeah it does right? some of the work for you yeah so would you say this would be a good beginners frog yes yeah okay yeah. so definitely add that to your guys arsenal the big gabbit from mega bass it comes in a bunch of colors some really unique colors as well definitely check that that's number three for me that's yeah. my number three also cool all right dope all right moving on i'm gonna go into the tekel land so for me i i combine these two into one now tekel makes a ton of a ton of frogs mm -hmm. right i don't know how many different ones they have eight or ten different frogs we could probably we should just do a tekel breakdown yeah. and walk through every single frog but these two are the ones that are super high on my list so Let's talk. Let's talk about the honker, okay? Real quick. So, I you do you throw the honker? I throw the honker a lot. Okay, cool. So let's talk about this because this is my favorite tackle frog. Mine, mine also. Okay, cool. We are on the same page. So here, talk, walk us through the walk us through the honker. Okay, so the honker is your normal style walking frog, but it has these metal feet on the bottom right here. So I use this when the bite's slow, and I need to move really slow. I'll cast it out into whatever cover. I'll do a couple twitches and then I'll let it sit. And these feet never stop moving. They're always doing something. They're twisting, they're, they're dangling. They're always doing something. So you can walk it like a normal frog. And as you're doing that, the feet will spin and kick up water. And then when you sit it, it'll just be like a frog swimming under the water. Yep. And then that's when it gets bit. It's kind of like, you know how sometimes you put a feathered treble on the back of a jerk bait? Mm -hmm. And the idea is that, you know, you, you've twitched it and it's paused and that feather has a chance to like open up and breathe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just that little feather opening up and breathing is just that continued movement and the fish key in and yep. get it. This is kind of that version in a frog. Even though it's metal instead of feather, but it's kind of doing the same, it's the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. And you can cast it and straight retrieve it too. Well, that's the other thing that I like about this frog. So this is a frog that like when I fish with my kids, mm -hmm. this is one that I can give them. It's easy to cast and they don't have to necessarily walk it. Like if they're struggling to get it to walk, they can just, just throw it out there and wind it. Mm -hmm. And when it winds, because those feet are on swivels, they'll spin Yeah. like a whopper plopper or like a little buzz bait kind of spin. They'll create some commotion in the back and it's super easy. Yeah, they'll spin and they'll clack against each other and they make this crazy like squeaky ting tinging noise. I don't know how right. to describe it. It's like clink 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 clink. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly how clink, it sounds. Clink clink clink. Yeah. Yeah, so they make the noise and uh you get a lot of bites on the retrieve. Just straight retrieving. Yeah, it's super dope. So uh, if you guys are exploring the Tekel lineup, definitely give this one a look, the Honker Frog. I I, I know you guys will love this frog. It's it's always in my box. Uh, and again, kind of the same thing. If you look at these frogs, you know, they've got that p perfect, you know, hook that comes out. So easy, easy hookup ratio as long as you're doing your job of letting it load just for a second and then swinging. So that's a great one. This is another one that I have high on my list, which is the Sprinker frog, right? Now this is probably the most popular tackle frog yeah because this is the frog that really kind of took the world by storm a few years ago with the uh with that sprinker tail so it basically allowed anglers to now have this hollow body weedless whopper plopper so the reason i love the sprinker frog is really it's probably the most customizable frog 
I think, period. Yeah. There's so many different things you can do with this frog. And if you guys follow Tekel on YouTube, which is just Tekel TV, they will, you know, Hideki, the owner of Tekel, will walk you through how to turn this into a jerk bait, how to turn it into a, a rat, how to, I yeah. mean, you can make one frog do so many different things the way he has it set up here with this pivot, right? Again, if you do absolutely nothing with it and just use it like this, you can just cast it out and wind it in and this tail is gonna basically just plop on the surface and create basically a weedless whopper plopper that works great. Now, this color is called Color Me. That's the name of the color, and this is another reason why I chose this frog. Now, this color is in uh, almost all of his frogs. Most of the time when I use this color, this is how I throw it, because this is a color that works really good yeah. in Arizona. But the idea with this color is that this color is designed to be custom colored by you. So that's another thing that makes this super dope. A lot of times you're you know, in an area and you're like, oh, you know what, I wish I had blue on my frog. I've seen blue dragonflies or I don't know, whatever craziness you can come up with, right? Mm -hmm. So very easily you can color this thing by just taking spike it, either the, the markers or the dyes and custom coloring it. And you've colored a ton of these things. Yeah. I love the Color Me series. Like you can you can do it any way you want. If you can put a color on it, you can do it. And yeah. it, and it stays on there. That's the best part. You right. Use those dyes. Yep. It stays. So. so if you guys want to play with that and have some fun, you know, you can use again the spike it pens are great. You can use the actual dip. Just take a Q tip and put it in the dip and then you can just kind of wipe it on. But then it gives you the ability to make any color that you need to fit the circumstances. And the dragonfly thing came to mind because that's the first time that I really needed a color to customize. Cause you know, it's hard like in the late summer, early fall and they start seeing all that blue uh, from the, the damsels and the dragonflies and all that stuff. It's hard to find things that mimic that, Yeah. right? I don't necessarily want a blue frog, you know, all the time, mm -hmm. but really simply you can, you know, customize it, give them some color they're looking for and you're, and you're in. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely add it to your list. It's a really fun frog. There's lots of customization you can do to it. So that's the Tekel Sprinker. And then rounding out the top five. Do you like this frog? I love this frog. All right, sick. All right, OSP Spintail Frog. Now this is probably of the ones we've talked about. This is probably the least known, Yeah. I would say. So, you know, in this store, everybody knows OSP, but on a worldwide level, people are still kind of discovering a lot of these baits. Yeah. So talk to me, talk to me about your experience with the OSP Spintail Frog. So I'm gonna use the Spintail when I have like matted cover, which is not super often here in Arizona, but I like it because it's a great walking frog, but that blade on the back is not ginormous and it's really subtle. So it gives you the flash, but when you have matted cover, you can walk, you can run this through the mat, and when you hit the open spots, you can pause it and do some twitches. The blade spins super fast, and then the fish just come unglued for it. It's a small body. So but a big hook still. Yeah. Which is what I love about it. The hookup ratio on this frog is amazing. Oh, yeah. So it's almost like they kept the hook of a big frog mm -hmm. in the small body. Yeah. Right? So there's tons of bite there you know, for a hookup ratio. And this is another one that you can just cast and wind. Mm -hmm. And if you just fish it right on the surface, this will spin kind of like a little buzz bait prop and you can just do a cast and retrieve. But I love what you're saying that the heavier cover, the smaller little pocket stuff, mm -hmm. this, this one really shines on that. It comes with a welded eye. So it's really easy to walk. So it has that little pivot so that you don't have to get in like a huge momentum. Yeah. Do you ever find that sometimes you throw your frog and it takes you a few twitches to really get it to get in momentum? Like sometimes it just has to start moving or you gotta pick up the slack or whatever mm -hmm. to get it to go. We don't always have that luxury when you have a real small pocket, Yeah. right? So by having that kind of welded ring on the front, it allows you right from the gate as you start twitching for that thing to pivot and be able to move and yeah, pretty dope. Yeah, so the it's just like putting a snap or a split ring on there. So originally the first frog that I ever messed with that had it was like that pony frog. Uh huh. The pony frog has it also. Yeah. But and because they're so small, 
it's harder to walk them because you you got to really like get it precise right. on your pops. But when you have this on there, it makes it so much easier. Yep, hundred yeah. percent. So definitely one if you guys are fishing around a lot of slop and you need a smaller profile, right? This is generally one that I would go to. You know, if you live in an area where they're getting a lot of pressure, they're seeing a lot of frogs, or maybe they're just eating smaller bait, like little, you know, small bluegill or, you know, whatever is living up under those mats. This is one you should definitely consider adding to the arsenal. That's the OSP spin tail. All right, guys, well, that is a wrap on our top five favorite frogs that we think you should add to your arsenal this season. Thanks for joining me, Greg. Yeah, absolutely, it's fun. Yeah, so let's go, let's go actually use these and we'll just do a tutorial on walking through the rods, how to walk them. If you guys have any questions on any of these items, drop us a question down below in the comments. Jeff will leave links to all these products in the description, so if you wanna check any of them out further, you can. Until next time, thank you for the business, thank you for the support, thank you for watching. Good job today. Thank you. Good job saying more than yes today. Yes. All right, Till next time guys, peace out. Let's go fishing.